Are you putting together a college admissions portfolio? I have been an AP art teacher for a long time, and I have collected some of my best advice for you if you want to stand out and succeed in your portfolio. Watch this video for tips and tricks, and I hope it's helpful to you. I'm Jordan Swain. I'm an educator, artist, and photographer, and I actually majored in fine art as well, so I had to do this myself as a high school kid. And I'm an AP teacher. So first things first, this isn't about your portfolio, but it's one little thing that I would suggest to you as a teacher is get those recommendation letters now. Ask your teachers ASAP, like at least with a month time uh, to give you those recommendation letters. If you are asking for one, make sure you're sending an email or even a letter or a note or a card, something that has good grammar and spelling and punctuation and ask them properly to give you a recommendation letter. Uh, when they say that they will do it, and if they can't do it, don't be offended. Sometimes they're super busy. Make sure to drop off a packet that includes your resume and your accomplishments. Even if it's just a list, they might not know what kind of things you do outside of school. So make sure to add that in so that they can get a well-rounded picture of you. Okay, let's get going about the portfolio. Couple things. Um, I'm just gonna go through a quick list and then I'm gonna go in depth to some of this stuff. So number one, why are you making an art portfolio? You wanna think about your goals. What is your goal for creating your portfolio? Write down a couple of goals so that you can stay focused while you're putting your portfolio together. A lot of students start to make their portfolios a year in advance. It's always a good idea, but if you don't have time, you can throw something sorry, something together last minute and it will still work out. What kind of artist are you? Are you doing your portfolio so that you can show your skills? Are you showing an interesting portfolio that shows range or are you a fashion student? Are you doing industrial design? What are you doing? Number three, super important, check the requirements of the colleges that you are sending the portfolios to. If they ask for a 150 DPI resolution on your photos, make sure that you follow those directions. Don't send more pieces than they request because they will throw them out. They won't look at them. Make sure that you have the software, materials, prep everything that you need and be prepared. Lightroom and Photoshop are a really great way to be able to edit your work and crop it and make it look great. You can also use Photopea, which is free, but check with your school district. A lot of districts, um, you can download Lightroom and Photoshop on your own home computer if you log in with your school email. Writing. Start writing about your art. You don't have to write a lot and you don't have to write anything fancy. You just have to say what you're making, how you're making it, and why you're making it. So for example, I am making a charcoal drawing to explore the idea of dark and light or value scales to um, show my depth of range in drawing. Super simple. Or you could add a little more meaning to it. Number five, get feedback from an expert. Don't be afraid to ask your art teacher or even call a local college and ask for somebody to look at your portfolio. There's no harm in asking and you'll be able to get some really good ideas from other people. Let's talk about showing skill. Number one thing you are doing in your college portfolio is showing the skills that you have. So pick things that you can show off. You want to brag about yourself a little bit. If you're really good at drawing birds or lobsters, for example, show that you can do a really good job. Pick some things to draw or to paint or whatever it is your, your media is and do a really good job on those. You want to think about some showpiece pieces and it doesn't have to be anything really groundbreaking in terms of subject. You can always just pick something that you're really good at, you feel confident about, and put those in there. Show that you understand the basics. Make sure to include some kind of a still life or figure, something that shows light and shadow. You can do animals because that shows texture. Use a variety of mediums and techniques. So if you always draw with pencil, do not just put a portfolio of only pencil drawings. You need to go in and maybe do some colored pencil, do some charcoal, do some chalk pastel, oil pastel. There's a lot of stuff that you can try. Put your strongest work at the beginning and the end. College portfolio reviewers will remember the first thing they saw and the last thing they saw. So if you have some filler stuff that you're not so sure about, put it in the middle. Show off your very best stuff. Another idea that you could do is show texture like metal or glass. Try drawing a car or a motorcycle or a bike. That shows a lot of practice. A couple of other ideas that are really successful are perspective. Perspective shows that you have been working on something and you've learned something or you've been working on learning something. Perspective is actually really hard to learn. 
Uh, maybe you've been doing it in art or maybe you don't know perspective, but either way you need to learn perspective. Try to put some perspective into your art, like two point or one point or even three point perspective. It takes skill and practice and admissions officers want to see that you will practice things and that you like to learn. Use your friends as models. Don't be afraid to pull them in and have them model for you. Do portraits of your friends. If you're doing photography, especially, and I'll talk about that later, um, really try things that are different and fun and interesting. And then if you, the more work you have, the more you can pick from. Artist books, book binding. If you have 3D work, it's really popular in portfolios. Anything 3D, if you're going to photograph it, and again, we can talk about photography later, you want to make sure that you light it up really well and put it in a neutral or plain background and get a good photo of it. Animations are awesome. Have you ever done a stop motion movie? Put that in your portfolio. Do motion graphics, infographics, design work, fashion design, industrial design. If you're majoring in something like industrial design, design something, something really simple like a door handle or something and put that in there. Um, it's okay to get weird when it comes to art. College people, art college people are especially used to art that is super weird. There is um, a link in this presentation, an artist named Joseph Buys that did a performance where he lived in an art gallery with a coyote for three days and it was filmed and photographed. And I mean, you could do that. You could live in a, in a gallery with a coyote for three days. But the whole idea of this is if you have an idea in your mind, if you have the tiniest creative idea that you want to try, try it, do it, go for it. Nothing can go wrong except for that you could make a piece of bad art and you'll always learn from that experience. So try things, get your safe work done, do work that you know is really good, and then do some pieces that show a little bit of risk-taking. So creating art that's not tra traditional. Um, unusual shapes, materials, evidence of risk-taking means trying new things. So think about going off the canvas. Think about maybe like sewing on your canvas or adding in items that are not traditional, or if you're doing photography, maybe paint on your photographs, print things out, go the extra mile, maybe try a mural, an art installation, fabric, books, photography with other elements. This is an artist named uh, Ava Hesse. Hesse, I think is actually, I think it's Ava Hesse. She was an artist in the 60s and she did this work called Contingent and it's basically these panels hanging from the ceiling. So make the viewer part of the environment, photograph your art, make an installation, go for it. Do something in your living room. The most important thing is to be authentic and tell your own story. Make sure to do your own original art. Don't look at Pinterest or Instagram or TikTok and get ideas and copy other people. Do completely your own work and people will see that it's you. You can definitely tell what's, when it's an artist. This is an, an artist named Frank Moth. It's actually a duo. They use collage work in a really cool way and you can tell that it's all by one artist, but it really does show variety and it shows good composition and super interesting. Let's talk about copyright. What is considered copyright infringement in art? When a copyrighted work is reproduced or performed or made in any way without permission of the copyright owner. So if you are doing fan art, if you're doing licensed characters, if you are doing like anime, even something that you think is obscure, somebody will know about it. So really stay away from copyrighted art. The other thing that you want to stay away from is going onto the internet to find reference photos for your college portfolio. This is fine to do when you're practicing your art or practicing, you know, doing your own thing. But when you are doing portfolio work, you want to make sure to create your own references or to combine references so that you're using like five photographs from the internet and you use little parts from each of them. You never know when a work is copyrighted or a photographer has done something and it, somebody will see it and be like, oh, that's a copy of whatever. So Please don't steal photographer work from the internet. Make sure that you create your own references. That will get it thrown out immediately. Um, here's some ideas of what to make. Do you want some real practical assignments? Here is your assignment. Number one, current events. Current events resonate with everyone. So pick a headline, make an artwork about it. This is relatable to the viewer because they know about current events. They can relate to it. They can understand it. History. Illustrate a historical event or a story. You can illustrate a fairy tale. You can illustrate something that's not real too. Um, if you want to go the route of making something from yourself, you can do a self-portrait from an unusual angle. I know those are seen a lot in art. You see like the self-portrait in the spoon. 
Um, but those are still really cool. And it shows that you have an unusual view and talent. So um, make an artwork about your life story or explore one topic through six to eight works, but use different media. So explore one thing, but use all different media. Editing, let's talk about editing in photos. Editing is super, super important. Lightroom is kind of the gold standard. If you don't have Lightroom and you're able to download or um, get Lightroom on your computer, get it. Take the tour of Lightroom from Adobe. It is absolutely fantastic. You can increase contrast, you can crop, you can straighten, you can make things look so much better. You should always be editing your work if you're a photographer. Uh, straight out of the camera is great. If you can take good photos out of the camera, that's wonderful, but you do always need to edit. I tell people that every single time. When you are taking photos of your work, you want to make sure that you're doing them parallel. So if I'm going to take a photo with a phone, I'm going to hold it straight like this so that it looks down on my work so that it's not tilted. I don't want it to tilt. And I'm going to do it in bright shades. So not in direct sun and not in sun that kind of makes like shade spots on it or sunspots on it. Make sure it's super focused. Clean your lens off. This is the trick. Always like take your shirt and just clean the little lens off and crop straighten fixed color. You can do this all in your phone. It's absolutely fine to do that, or you can do it in software. So it's up to you. Don't include the frame or surroundings unless this is part of the art. Make sure things are well lit. You can use a lamp. You can flip a lamp sideways. Just do a very good job on photography. It'll make your portfolio look fantastic. Thanks for listening to my advice and good luck with your portfolio. I hope that you take these suggestions to heart and make awesome art. Have a good school year.